Today I'm going to be talking about Sophie Jen Jembra in Anderson. Uh, Jen Jembra is French, probably honestly don't know, but she is French British, it's British French, so it's probably French, and that's why I can't pronounce it. Okay. And I'm gonna be calling her Sophie because I don't believe in calling people by their last name because it's stupid. That is the wrong way of saying that. <laughs> okay, Sophie is one of my favorite artists ever. I discovered her when I was looking at a Wikipedia um, page for fairies. Basically, if you look up Wikipedia and fairies, this is the first image that shows up. Which, my first reaction was like, hey, that's not a fairy. Fairies don't look like that, or speci specifically fae don't look like that. But, um, uh, the second thing was, uh, wow, this is really beautiful. Um, because, like, the thing about this painting is, like, the hair is so soft, and, like, the butterflies, and wings, and it's so detailed and beautiful, and I love it so much, and the, uh, it's, it's really one of my favorite paintings ever. Like, I am should have just made a PowerPoint, but this is easier for me because my script is on the compu the the computer. <laughs> so yeah, this is the painting. It's beautiful. Now, um, let me pull my script up. Um, the this painting's title is "Take the Fair Face of Woman and Gently Suspending with Butterflies, Flowers, and Jewels Attending, Thus Your Fairy is Made of the Most Beautiful Things," which is taken from a poem by Charles Ede. Um, after I was done reading the entirety of the Wikipedia pages on fairies, folklore, and mythology, I was bored once again, as you are. So I decided to look up what a woman from the East Coast person made this painting, and that's how I found out about Sophie. Okay, Sophie was born in Paris in 1823. It's not specified what day exactly, which is curious, considering the fact that even for that time, uh, they usually at least specified what month. Um, she discovered her interest in art when she was 17 and a traveling artist visited her town. This town is not Paris, but a remote area in France. Once again, not specified where. There's a lot of details missing uh, from her life. She is mostly self-taught, which is really cool, but also briefly studied under Charles de Steuben, um, who is German, I think. And he painted mostly historical paintings. Let me cut this. Um, and um, basically, this is a self-portrait, I think. And this is Hugh Capet, probably mispronouncing that. Who was the king of the Fran Franks from eighty, from nine hundred eighty-seven to nine hundred ninety-six? These portraits uh, show the features that um, Sophie took out from Charles, like the softness in the face, the shadows, the details in the hair. Also, he's like really good in painting the textures of fabric. Like here, you can like, I, you just know what that feels like, you know. Um, same here, like very detailed uh, it's very obvious that she learned was taught by him how to paint hair um, um sophie and her family moved to america to escape the french revolution of nine of 1848 which is the revolution in which they beheaded all their kings um so this takes um takes place during the second act of hamilton specifically during the um cab uh during the song cabinet battle uh two for all you Hamilton fans out there. Um, after living in the States for a while, they moved to London, where Sophie sold her first painting, which was this. I should have just made a PowerPoint. Um, Elaine, this is Elaine, the picture, was the first public collection purchased by a living woman. This is a huge deal. Her painting would be open to public. She would get credit for it. Um, and all of that while she was still alive. Like, this was the first time that had ever happened. Um, the painting depicts a morning servant, this one, uh, rowing the um, Elaine's body over there to Camelot. 
Uh, the painting is based on a poem by Lord Tennyson, which tells the story of Elaine, who falls in love with Sir Lancelot, but he in turn falls in love with Queen Guinevere, and then they all die, as is usually the case for um, the Knights of the Round Table tales. Um, she mostly made oil paintings, and I know nothing about oil paintings, so excuse me if I get anything wrong. Okay, oil paint is paint that uses oil as a binder, obviously. Uh, oil painting has um, as an advantage that you can use a very wide range of colors, meaning that you can make very subtle changes in the tone and richness of color. I'm, I'm reading this off because like the rest is improvised, but I need this because I know nothing um, about uh, oil painting. Um, the tone and richness of color can we, we can see in Sophie's work. Oil paint takes much longer to dry than other paints, meaning that you have more time to work on a painting. Other paintings made with oil paint are the Mona Lisa by Leonardo da Vinci and the Kiss by Gustav Klimt. Uh, Leonardo da Vinci, we all know him, Gustav Klimt, probably not. <laughs> she mostly com um, she most commonly, that is a weird sentence, she mostly painted children and women in forests, fields, and otherwise naturey backgrounds. Uh, now we're going to look at my favorite paintings by her. We've already talked about the fair face of women. This one. So let's get into the rest. An autumn princess. Let me fold this in half so I don't spoil the surprise. An autumn princess. Um, uh, which looks like me when I was younger and I looked exactly like this painting yes it's one of my favorite paintings i'm self-centered i know um also autumn is my favorite season so let's just canonically establish that i'm a time traveler <laughs> um this girl is wearing a flower crown made of hollies um which uh, are the little berries um commonly associated with christmas she also has embroidery of a holly on her dress over here um, so we can assume she really likes those, I guess. Um, the state of her clothes, the fact that they're not neatly done, um, uh, suggests that she just spent like a day running around in the fields or something. She's laying on the ground, looking directly at the viewer. Is this for real? I'm sorry, the lighting is terrible. I'm gonna have to open my window. Okay, I am back. Uh, and the light is back! I'm sorry I have this thing. Fluff you, you floof and floof. And it has cat ears! And pockets, which is also nice. Um, uh, she's laying on the ground, looking directly at the viewer. Which, not a lot of paintings of Sophie do that. Um, I love this portrait because I recognize the situation the girl's in. She's like, tired but happy and like just laying on the ground being like wow <sighs> my life you know um next painting heaven words now this one is very an angelic it's definitely one of the more idealistic um portraits of the bunch i don't really have much to say about this painting but like a lot of people say that this girl's an angel i don't think so uh, this is the title heaven words suggests that she's going to heaven. So I think that this wonderful girl is dead. Yeah, fun. <laughs> that was dark. Let's go next. She Sherazade. Sherazade. Um, the only painting by Sophie I can find that depicts a person of color. And it's just as beautiful as the rest, because obviously. This painting uh, depicts Scheherazade. 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 From the stories of Thousand and One Nights. I'm going to be very honest and admit that I used to have a little bit of a crush on this painting. <laughs> I love the details in the hair. Uh, Sophie usually paints people with loose hair, so it, um, the braids might have been a bit of a new thing for her. To try out and they turned out amazing um the peacock feather is very detailed um i also really like how each piece of jewelry um reflects the light 
um, which is realistic and just, I like that. And then we have Wait For Me, which is the smallest portrait. And honestly, this is a very yellow. Honestly, it kind of looks like a picture, but it's not. Um, it's a painting of a little girl pulling up her socks on the rocks in front of her. We can see a slate and bag with chalk, meaning that she did just come home from school. Um, uh, I really like the detail in the background, like the brick wall. Um, it looks like this girl's being left behind from a group of people, and she's looking at them kind of angry, kind of sad, because she wanted them to wait for her, like... We've all been there. If you're the kind of friend that, like, if you were three friends and you're the one that has to walk behind them on the sidewalk, yeah, that that's what that girl feels like. Um, now I wanted to give an honorable mention to paintings that I really wanted to talk about, but don't have time for. Uh, the Turtle Dove. Um, her favorite pet. Her favorite pets. Founding Girls at Prayer in the Chapel, which is a very long title, and a ne Neapolitan Boy. Um, I'm gonna put all my sources in the description, and I really recommend looking at more of Sophia's paintings because they are gorgeous. This was it for today, um, yeah, I see you next Sunday, I guess.